Today I'm going to talk to you about Python. Python is an easy to learn, high level programming language. It's very popular nowadays to teach programming and it is often the first programming language that someone learns. But before we talk about Python specifically, let's talk about how to choose your first programming language. You really do have a lot of choices and there's a lot of things to consider. The first thing to consider is, is it easy to learn? And the second thing that you probably want to consider is, if I learn this language, how can I apply it? Not every language can be used in every context. Python's great because it can be used for web development, game development, data and analysis, and embedded system programming. It's not really used for mobile app development. That's more Java and C-based languages. If you learn Python, however, you can garner yourself a six-figure salary. There are some places in the United States that are great to be a programmer. California is one of them. They're looking for JavaScript, Java, and Python programmers. And once you learn one programming language, it's very easy to learn another. Some other popular states for programmers, New York, Texas, Massachusetts, Virginia. Once again, JavaScript, Java, and Python are sought after programming languages. Some other things to consider, the popularity. Over time, languages wax and wane as far as their popularity. If you take a really close look at each one of these programming languages, you'll see that Python is shooting straight up. Its popularity has really taken off, and that's one of the reasons why you're going to be learning it. When you take all of these things into consideration, the popularity, the many applications for Python, and how easy it is to learn, it's the natural choice for a first language. So what is Python? Python is a relatively new language created in 1989 by Guido van Rossum, who's from the Netherlands. Python is great because it's an interpreted language. It doesn't have a separate compilation step that the programmer has to perform independently. So it really speeds up development and speeds up your learning. There are currently two major versions of Python out there. One is called 2x and 3x is the new one. We're going to be using a combination of these throughout the course. But why Python? Once again, Python is high level, which means it looks a lot like English, so you'll be able to read it and understand it. It's portable, so it works on any operating system, and it's easy to read, write, and use. What happens is you write code, and then there's something called the Python interpreter that translates this high level language to something low level that the machine likes. Once again, it's an interpreted language, which means no separate compilation step. Let's take a closer look at the Python interpreter. I don't want to get too deep here, but what it does is it takes your human understandable high level code and it translates it, what we call compiling, into something machine friendly and then it executes the code. Then it shows you the results from the code that you wanted it to execute. You can access the Python interpreter either through an interactive console or through an interactive development environment like idle. What is the Python console? The Python console is like a shell. You type commands and it immediately responds. You know that you're in the Python console when you see the triple greater than sign. That is the prompt where you type in your code. When you type in your code, the commands are sent to the Python interpreter, which compiles and executes them. And then the results are sent back and shown to you on the screen. So I'm going to do a really quick demo for you. It doesn't look very fancy, but here I am on the command line on a Windows machine. First thing I'm going to do is figure out which Python version I'm using. I'm using 3.5.2, but it doesn't really matter. I launch Python to get into the interactive shell, into the Python console. And you see the triple greater than sign? That tells me that I can type commands. I typed a print command, it went through the interpreter, and I got my results back. And now I'm going to quit. Idle. Idle is short for Integrated Development Environment. It is a simple what we call IDE or Interactive Development Environment. Basically a program that helps you write programs. So this is used to create, save, and run simple programs as files. Python files normally have the .py extension. Normally people start with this very simple, very crude IDE called Idle and then they move on to more complicated IDEs as they gain experience. So I'm going to launch idle. 
Bridle is kind of confusing because it has a combination of a built-in shell similar to the console I just showed you where I can issue commands at the prompt. Once again, you type, it responds. So that's one way to get to the interpreter or I can create a new file that I'm going to put Python commands in. So I'm going to create myself a little program file. I'm going to save it onto my flash drive. Doesn't really matter where I save it. I'm going to my code directory. I've already got a folder out there that says Python projects. And I'm going to call this one hello and I'm going to give it the .py extension and save it. So here it's sort of like typing something into a notepad. I'm going to go ahead and write my code right here. And it will not execute right away. To execute, I need to save it and then run it using F5 or run module. Notice how it took my code and sent it to the shell and ran it as one big batch. So that is what we call idle. 